Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and this channel is dedicated for you who wants to study about our studio. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and give your like. Previously, I have uploaded a first video about how to read XML file. This is a part 2 of two videos. In the first video, I have mentioned that the structure of XML file is actually a nested list. A nested list means that there is a list inside a list. If you imagine an XML file as a tree, then the root of a tree is actually the list contains inside. As an example given here, The first root children is TR. TR is the transmittance. This data belongs to a friend of mine from an instrument that analyzes a spectrum of some ch chemical substance. What she wants to do is to extract the first node and the second node, or perhaps the third node as well. To do this properly, I actually need a help from the instrument's guidebook, but unfortunately, my friend didn't provide me with any, so I decided to just check them one by one. Remember, this uh, XML file contains 17 children nodes or 17 root uh, children. And then we can get all of the information of these uh, children inside by using this syntax. Let's check again the name of root children number 2 and root children number 3. They are the parameters that we would like to extract as well. I create them as a list because it's a structure that I'm familiar to work with, so I can understand the character of the data. Using the str syntax or the view syntax, we can get the inside of the list. Remember, all nodes are now the element of the list, and list element is accessed by the double bracket uh, sign. Here is the structure of list. Uh, element list number one and if we want to view the data we can use the view syntax so here the byte order format num values are actually the same to make it simple it is just how the xml file store the data so all we have to do is to extract this data as a numeric vector and remember the attribute names is transmittance in percentage and the values are stored in the tag in short what i can tell you that this data on the first to third nodes are actually informations that is stored for the y-axis I would like to remind you again about the rule for accessing the element inside a list. Let's check the result of the values we extract for from the value from the node 1. We have converted the values into numeric and for node 2 and 3 are in the same list structure with node 1, so we can use the same syntax. The x-axis information belongs to root children number 4, root children number 6, and root children number 7. And for node 4, let's see again the structure of the list by the str or the view syntax. Looking at these structures, we can extract the values and make it and I'm sorry, and make them as a data frame for the attribute name and also the values. The same method is applied for node 6 and node 7. Remember, or of these uh, values from node 6, 7, and also number 4 are the list that uh, stored the values in the x-axis information.
the transmittance is stored in element list number 4 and here is how to convert them as a data frame Let's check the data frame. However, all of these are still in the character or string format. And now uh, we can convert or extract the list element number 6 and number seventh. Let's check our data frame for element list number six. As I said that all of these data are still in the string or character format or character class data. But of course we can make the values of the x axis by getting the information of the minimum and maximum values stored in each of the element list. And to make it easy, we can make them as a more familiar format. I will make them as a data frame and First, uh, let's define the x-axis for each of the y-parameter, which is the transmittance and two of the single cells. Because the minimum values of x-axis is stored in the row number 4, column 2, and the maximum is stored in row number 3, uh, column 2, uh, we use this information to generate the sequence of x, and also we use uh, the same information to uh, generate the sequence for x2 and x3 for each of the information in node 6 and node 7. Here is the data frame. Let's check the data frames for the transmittance in the F1. And then for the single cell SN, SCSN, and then for a single cell RF. And for plotting them, we use a library ggplot and to save them we need the library treat and treat extra after loading all of the libraries then we can uh, create the plot which is a line type plot This is for transmittance combined with the uh, SCSN and P2 is for SCRF. Let's check or display the graph or the plots. And then also for the SCRF, RF, I mean. And to save it as a PDF files, let's we extract the file name, which is from our XML file, and then put all of the plots into a list and save them as a PDF file. 
In this video, I didn't give a tutorial about how to create the line type plot by ggplot package, but I think I will make it as a separate tutorial video. And let's check our file. Now it's stored in our documents, in our working directory. The preview, okay, so here is the graph already saved in a PDF files. Okay, that's all and thanks for watching and I hope you learned something from this video and see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye!